quite a few faces on the place. I've um, been involved in the culture for a couple of years. Um, I played sports, uh, you know, still trying to do a little bit, but I did take sports very, very seriously. Um, when I was younger, through my teenage years, and um, in my 20s, and, um, you know, I suffered a lot of injuries as, as, as time went on. And things have changed drastically between then and now in terms of the information that's out there. But I think most people here are here because you love sports, you love GA, and you've played, and now you're, you're coaching. So I think if you've been through that cycle, you understand the, the benefits of it all, but you also understand the frustrations with not being able to do what you want to do. Okay, whether that's and one of those causes is injuries. Um, so like I said, I wouldn't take sports very seriously. Suffered a lot of injuries, gone to a lot of you know a lot of physios, got loads, spent loads and loads on treatments. Um, I, I remember getting a particular injury once, and, and my, my sister is a is a physiotherapist. And she couldn't fix it. I remember not speaking to her for about two years after that. <laughs> um, so I think everyone here understands the frustration of being injured. Now, I uh, work out of a clinic over in, in Font Hill there, um, treating basically anything from necks, backs, but the way it has gravitated towards is more sports injuries. And I see more and more young people. Um, I'm involved with the minor and other 21 teams, and even last year there was probably you know, three hip operations with, with people that young. Um, so, injuries are becoming, you probably don't think they're happening younger and younger, but they're becoming a, a, a pain for everyone involved. Obviously for you as coaches, it's very frustrating, but for the, for the players as well, it's, it's extremely frustrating. So, um, we're trying to compile, compile a, a talk um, for this, you know, a lot of the time it goes down the lines of, you know, exercise presentation. But really that's not near far enough. That, that, doesn't, that, that isn't going to work. And just by getting exercises here, and you go home with eight or ten exercises, that's not going to really change anything. Okay? So, there will be exercises, um, but we're talking more about implementing an injury prevention program, either for your, for your club as a whole, or for, for your team, if you want to do it on that scale there. The things that need to happen, okay? Um, so, let's, let's get started. Uh, a lot of the research on this comes from a lot of different sports, okay? So, so GA is an amateur sport, small country. There is more and more research being done into GA and injuries, but obviously in bigger countries and more professional sports, there's a huge amount of research done there. So a lot of the sports can be very similar mechanics. So it's taken from, say, for example, ice hockey, netball, and you know, tennis, basketball, soccer, rugby. But all of those sports involve landing, turning, twisting, sprinting, slowing down. Okay. And um, so we, we'll we we'll get started here. Okay. So talk about the types of injuries, just a bit for, you know, in general. Right. You've got contact injuries non-contact injuries and um, the vast majority of injuries are non-contact so contact obviously you get a bang can anything be done about contact injuries well in very competitive and intense environments they're going to happen it's, it's part and parcel of being in the contact sport you know if you can move a little bit better and get there a second area you know there's an argument that some can be avoided um, non-contact injuries basically you're not hit by anyone but you get injured. And they can be acute, which is a sudden injury, or, or overuse, where it, it gradually builds up over time. So, sudden injury, you're, you're sprinting, and you, you tear, feel a sharp pain in the back of your leg, hamstring tear, or overuse, you, you, know, you wake up the next morning, and your back is a little bit stiff, or you have a little pain down around your Achilles. And they're all non-contact, acute overuse, really they're, they're in our control. As coaches, as, as, as players and managers, they really are in our control, okay? So, talking a little bit more about overuse injuries, seeing as they're certainly the ones we can do a lot about. And 
repetitive microtrauma. So basically that means, say for example, say for example, you don't have enough range of motion in your hip joint. Okay? But you have to run and you have to twist and you have to turn. Well, you're, you're going to try, your body is going to get that movement from somewhere. So think of the tissues inside your hip joints. You, you, for example, your groin. So they're under a little bit more load all the time. So you wake up the next morning, your groin is a little bit sore. Maybe eases off, Tuesday, it's gone again, your grand, you can go a little bit sore again on Wednesday, but by Thursday it's eased down, and as the weeks go on, maybe it's still hanging around by the Thursday. Then it's still in the warm-up, but you know, after the warm-up you're okay. So it happens gradually, and next thing it's sore all through the game, and next thing you can't get through 20 minutes, next thing you can't get through the warm-up. Next thing you're sore, walking up and down the stairs, or getting in out of the car. And so that's just, just an example, but develops gradually, and for that reason, it can be unreported, as in it's not mentioned. Now, that, that would be a case for us as adults, because you will automatically think, okay, well, you know, get over that, it's legal, move on, you know? And just think of that in terms of a teenager. Like, it's very difficult for teenagers to report, you know, uh, I have this the next day, and, you know, they're there with you on the Thursday, and they're feeling fine, so it's kind of, you just move on. Not in any way that every legal needs to be listened to at all. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all, but these overuse injuries develop gradually, they can be unreported, and so part of that, teaching that athletes and players how to recognize it, okay? Like, even recognizing the difference between, say, an eagle and an injury, or what to do if that happens. The, the P2P program, which is prepared to play, I'm going to speak to you a little bit more about that towards the end, which covers all of that kind of thing. And so, obvious injuries. Think, think of your talented player. Now, you know, your talented 14 year olds. More than likely playing, playing both codes, maybe at that age, and maybe playing a year above as well, helping out there. Playing with schools, and um, playing on development squads, maybe plays another sport if, he, if he's quite athletic, he or she is quite athletic. So that person doing very, very well, performing very, very well, jumping, sprinting, running all the time, working at their, their maximum. After so, so often, you know, they get a little pain in the back of their heel, or, or their shin, or, or their groin, or their knee, wherever it is, they have to miss a trainer or two. Happens gradually, maybe they're okay some days, and then they miss a week, they can't train for a week, can't play that game, get down, get disappointed about it, think, okay, I can't play that sport now. And it just it just goes on like that. So, you know, two years later, that having suffered that type of low level constant annoyance and frustration, oftentimes that 16 or 17 year old has been a little bit disillusioned. And, and, and isn't really involved anymore, are involved to the same extent. I presume you've seen examples of that in, in your own clubs or as you were playing yourself, or even now as you're working with teams. And so yeah, there's a talk of, okay, once they get to 18, they lose a lot of interest, other distractions, but there's also this element here as well. So, um, as long as we're okay with uh, obvious injuries and, and, and acute sudden injuries, we're going to talk a little bit more about injuries just before we get into it. Um, so, how do injuries happen? And again, this, this can cover acute or obvious injuries. So, say when you're, when you're jogging and, and running sports, it really is, it's, it's, on, it's on a single limb as, as you're moving. So, even as you jog, it's, it's 2.7 times your body weight. Is transmitted through that through that limb, okay? So that's obviously increased as you sprint and land and cut. Now, in order for you to be able to cope with that, your tissues, so your muscles, for example, let's just take your muscles, they have to be strong and developed enough to be able to cope with that kind of load, okay? If they're not, the stress then gets placed on other tissues like your tendons or your ligaments, okay? Now. There's more involved with that. Uh, it's not just about strength, it's, it's how you run. And we'll talk a little bit more about how someone lands, for example. But um, what I'm saying here is you have to be able to cope with loads. So when we talk about the program later on and the exercises that you're giving to someone, we'll be mentioning that the player has to understand, for, for them to buy into it, they have to understand why they're doing it. 
So it's important that we all understand why we're doing it. Um, so you can think, right, if there's that much body weight going through my limbs, you know, a simple exercise like a single leg squat with good technique is a very valuable exercise because, it, and also it's safe, no back issues, and translates very much to the sport. Um, if, if our muscles that we can't cope with that, all right, and say you run a little bit, and say for example your glutes, you hear a lot about you know, glutes are mentioned in everything, but ha they have a big role to play in, in lower body injuries. So the role of your glutes, two of the roles of your glutes are to you put your leg out like that and externally rotate it like that. So say for example, that's not working. So as you're running each time, your leg is rolling in the way a little bit like that, okay? And as you move, this is what's happening all the time. So I know a lot, a lot of you can't see that there, but basically, that can lead to a little bit of stress in your knee and some tissues on the inside of your knee taking a lot of stress. Okay, so your glutes being strong and being able to, to absorb that load and control your limb can obviously lead then to less knee injuries. So rather than trying to get into the mechanics of all injuries, I'm just trying to give an example of, of how injuries happen if they can't transmit that load. So one of them is, is lack of control and strength. The other which we'll be looking at later on is our technique. Um, so, injury prevention, you think, right, oh, I was, I was, I was sprinting and no one hit, you know, I, I tore my hamstring, so there's nothing you can do about that. Well, you know, really, there is a lot you can do about that. So say, for example, if you're sprinting and you think, I'm going to get in the way there. So if you think, right, my hamstring is a little bit tight and as I'm sprinting and I'm racing against the guy now, and I want to be able to, you're trying really hard, and you want to really be able to force your leg out like this, your hamstring goes from there to there. So as you force that out, if you don't have, for example, flexibility there, then you can snap it and tear it, okay? On the other way, back like this, if you're trying to roll and your legs back in this position, and your hip flexors are very, very tight, you're going to really try and get that movement from somewhere, so then you start arching your back. So as you're sprinting, this little action is happening here, and next thing you're getting a little bit of low back pain. So that's an example of where how we move or an, an inability to have full range of motion can lead to either a sudden injury or a chronic injury. Okay, so injury prevention, why bother? Okay, um, why do we do it? Really because we want to play our sport. Okay, we want to, we want to be happy, be able to train, sport makes us happy, there's so many advantages, we, we know all of that, and we want to be able to do that. The other thing that gets missed a little bit is injury prevention techniques or exercises, they lead to increased performance, power generation, and an ability to decelerate and change direction. So the techniques we talk about are the injury prevention techniques we talk about. They also have a direct benefit to on the pitch performance. There's a little bit of a, a, a missing link there in terms of that there's a, an attitude that it, if I want to be able to move better on the pitch, I need to be able to lift heavy things. Okay? But there's a lot more to it than that. So some of the techniques we use the exercise you use for injury prevention directly improve your performance on the pitch. So say for example, um, your muscles aren't strong enough eccentrically so when they're letting so say your muscles aren't strong enough to slow you down. So you're both sprinting for a ball and it hits off someone and goes that way. Now, you need to be able to control that, slow down quickly and change direction. So for example, if your hand, hamstrings aren't in, that, in good enough condition for that, well, you might be the same pace running forward, but the guy who has that control, he can turn a lot quicker and get there quicker. So you get to the ball quicker, and you know, the games go. So there's a direct relationship between what I'm talking about here, preventing injuries, and performance on the pitch. If you're going to get one thing from today, I prefer, if, you know, injury prevention stuff isn't seen as put it in a basket, you do it, you know, you do it, that's for five minutes or ten minutes before training, or someone does that on their own, and that's so, that's for them. Okay, this directly relates to 
how your lads and, and girls perform well on the pitch or get any moves. So, why do we play sport? For moments like this, so we can perform well if we're lucky enough and get a chance to win things. <laughs> Put that, put that one there. And then, also there's the other side of it, okay? So as we spoke at the start, I'm sure everyone's frustrated, has been frustrated at certain times with, with these type of scenarios <coughs> when you're left uh, not being able to do what you want to do, okay? I, I couldn't get a picture of a GA there are crying, so I had to use more of Okay, so benefits of injury prevention programs. They significantly reduce injuries, they improve speed, strength, power and performance. Now that is crucial in getting managers and players to believe in injury prevention programs. Okay? Yes, it reduces injuries, but it also improves performance. Um, so, injury prevention awareness improves performance. I think I've said that enough. Okay, injuries in GA. Um, there's been a couple of studies done on it. 76% uh, of them are lower body injuries. Very similar between hurling and football. A uh, few more upper body injuries, obviously, hands and stuff, like hurling, fingers. But the vast majority of them are low, lower body. Um, and the majority of them are hamstrings. Okay, hamstring is, 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 is the most common one. I think, you know, we, we, it's probably the one you hear most about. There's a lot of reasons for that. But um, it, it really shouldn't be happening as much as it should. Now, there was a, there, there was a recent study on there last year, 2013, on the Norwegian soccer team. And they tried this, these different sets of exercises. And that has been by far, in a way, the most successful um, hamstring prevention program um, in terms of rehabbing from injuries and also preventing them happening that year. It was, it's like an 80% 80% better than previous programs. So um, there are developments happening there. Groin and pelvis, there's talk about that all the time now. Um, you know, hip groin injuries. See an article in the paper all the time. A lot of lads going in for, for, for different procedures, and again, there's a lot of you know a lot of thoughts and theories on that uh, and why that's happening so much. Ankle and knee injuries as well, and um, so they're, they're the form. You hear an awful lot about knee, and obviously ACL is a horrible injury because when it happens, it's it's pretty much nine months that you, you have to try and rehab it. You know, probably only two or three percent of the injuries, but you hear about it a lot because it's. Such a horrible one, and again, that can vary from team to team. The Dublin hurlers a few years ago had, had a higher incidence of it, and that just, that can just happen. So, hamstring, groin, pelvis, ankle, and knee would be the most common injury. So, whenever you're looking at an injury prevention program, this is what I've done here with, with, with this P2P program, um, and the information that I'm giving you, you ha have to honestly look at the injuries that are most relevant to that sport. Okay, so they're they're the, the main ones. Now, considerations for de developing an injury prevention plan. Um, okay, like, there, there are a huge, with the fitness industry growing down the last while, there's a huge amount of qualified professionals, okay? And some are very qualified, some are as good at marketing as they are at anything else. But there's more and more qualified professionals out there and the standard is, is, is increasing. And internet sources now, everything is widely available. So there's, there's no point in me here coming up and, and getting you downstairs in the hall and giving me a few exercises and leaving it at that. In, in, in two minutes on the internet for free, you can download the FIFA 11 Plus program or the GA 15 Warm Up. Now, FIFA 11 Plus was the original one and it's proven to significantly reduce injuries. Okay, and it's out there, it's been out there for free for a long time. But it, it, you know, there, there are disadvantages to those programs as well. Uh, it's only the warm up, and they're about 20 minutes long, I think the GA was about 15. There's no ball involved, but there's a lot of pros to it as well. But my point is, there's a lot of resources out there. It's not that we don't have the resources. Okay, so you have to think, right, why are there so many injuries? Why is this still happening? Okay, and. Um, so, in terms of why you think this, what's stopping 
obviously injuries are, are quite happening quite a lot. What's stopping you implement an injury prevention program? What what are your own thoughts on it? Does anyone have any you know thoughts as to why I can't go doing this? What what come, what springs to mind? Once you don't see the benefits right away. Yeah, don't see the benefits straight away. That's a very good one. Yeah, and that's a lot of players will buy into it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. GA is a very traditional organisation. We always did it this way. It always worked for us. Why would you change? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else from your own point of view as coaches? Maybe, but, uh, coaches feel they're not skilled enough. Some of the, some of the exercises are quite technical. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, <coughs> yeah, you pretty much covered covered, covered most most things there. Um, Let's take a look at it. So, going through all the research, you can, you, the reasons why these programs fail or doesn't happen or hasn't happened yet, and it hasn't happened in, in GEA yet, there's been nothing comprehensive that covers everything. Okay? Now you can narrow, the, narrow it down to three things. Players' attitudes, coaches' knowledge, and then the group and individual setting. So you get them for, you know, three sessions a week, that's three hours in the week. That's, you know, you've a lot to get through and get done in that time, so there's a huge amount of time where they're not with you. So you have to consider both settings. And we're going to go through and talk a little bit about those, but they really are the three categories that need to be addressed. So, players' attitudes. And um, there was a, the only relevant one done was on Australian rules football, which is, again is it, it, quite similar in, in, in the mechanics and movements to, to our own sports here. Um, they did it on over 360 players from the ages 17 and up, okay? Um, and it was purely on their beliefs and um, what causes injury, prevention of injury. It was on their attitudes, big questionnaire and interview, okay? Now, what came out of that was that and a lot of this should ring home because I would have had the same attitude, you know, and I think a lot of us would have had the same attitude or have the same attitude. Training is for game performance. When you come to train, you want to get better at this and that. Okay, These, there's enough to work on. And what came out of it was younger players were, had much more positive views and were, were much more receptive to change. Okay? And the players felt that injury prevention, in order to, for me to stay injury free, I need to go and run more. Okay? Now, without getting into all the research, that's clear as day, not true. Even if we spoke about the example we, we went through at the start, if you're running slightly off at all and there's continuous stress somewhere, that can lead to more injury. So sometimes it, it's the worst thing you could do. But their belief was, if I want to stay injury free, I need to run. And in it, I think, it was their warm up um, had to be like straight line running and as they wanted cars running up and down. Okay? Um, balance, landing, cutting, exercises like that, um, BS, uh, didn't work. Okay? They felt, no, that's ridiculous. Why would I practice those other exercises? They, so basically, their attitudes and beliefs were 100% down this road which directly conflicts with injury prevention, okay? And, um, you know, I, I think if we took a survey of a lot of GA teams that work with, the attitude would be reasonably similar. Okay, so coaches, the barrier then, there was other surveys done and interviews and research done on coaches, and there was, there was a comprehensive one done in Scandinavia, and there was a few done on, say, junior uh, rugby league, netball, and soccer, uh, soccer clubs. Um, none at the very elite level, but at the semi-professional and, and amateur level uh, stuff. So, the majority of the coaches said that basically we don't know what to do. Okay, we, we played, we like coaching now, we don't know these techniques, we don't know what to do. They felt that they needed specific coach education. Like overwhelming, like over ninety percent, they needed education uh, programs, and including the exercises needed, and they felt that they needed resources from that that they could use in order to be able to effectively implement something. All of those things were lacking. So group 
an, an individual setting. Yeah. So in order to promote compliance and buy-in from the players, two aspects have to be considered, right? So you've got the group setting and the individual practice. Now, you know that the Australian rules study we said of over 360 players, one of, when they got down to it, and the question's really got down to why you believe this, one of the overwhelming things that came out was that um, they weren't doing rehab in training sessions. They said in order for them to, they just wanted to come to training sessions and get stronger or faster or whatever it was. So in order for a player to buy in to this program of injury prevention, that needs to be done in the training session. Okay? And those exercises need to be included. And out you're thinking, Jesus, like, you know, this was one of you all these drills, these games, you know, physical training to do. When, when you look through it all, it doesn't have to be time consuming at all. Okay? But in order for it all to work, we spoke about what the coaches need. The players for them to genuinely buy into it, they need it to happen in the training session as well. So let's just talk about the training session. Okay? It can be done in a group setting, so multi-station or circuit. So say for example you have you know, four, let's just go with four exercises, or six exercises, or eight exercises, whatever you want. You can set it up in four stations. So if you're training inside, great, in the gym or in the hall, or you're training outside, and have four, four cones down, players know right, that cone is for mobility work. That cone, uh, cone there, a little bit of strength work, there's your balance work and so on. Players come in, they spend two minutes at each one. You do that exercise for two minutes. That exercise for two minutes. So less than, you know, there'll be a little bit of time organizing it as well. But less than 10 minutes, you can have that done. That's all it takes. Now, that can be organized by, by players coming to training. They just go to the stations automatically and they start doing their little bit of work. They're not exercises that you need to be hugely warmed up for, so it's safe to get in and get do it. Okay? Um, your other option is to do it uh, in, in, a, in a circuit form. So basically, you all come together, we all go, right, let's go with this exercise now, we all do that for two minutes, next exercise for two minutes. So there's two option, options in terms of implementing it. I would imagine the multi-station one, it gives players responsibility, they do it, they come a little bit before training, four or five minutes, and they just get it started. In, in Liverpool, um, uh, Liverpool Football Club, you know, with, um, with, with athletes who are earning that amount of money, there, there's, there's, there's a, a difficulty in getting through to them a lot of the time. Um, you know, a lot of coaches, strength and conditioning coaches and physios would, 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 would talk that it's, 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 you know, there's a lot of issues in terms of just getting them to buy into it because they're extremely talented. They get, whether they play or not, they get paid 100 grand a week. So there's not that much responsibility on them. So uh, um, a doctor from, uh, from Australia went over to head the me uh, medical department in Liverpool a few years ago, and he changed all that around, and they got it in the contracts that they had to do um, injury prevention work, and all that involved with that multi-station um, multi uh, program, I think it was three times a week for 15 minutes. So they just did at four stations, and they did it uh, three minutes at each station, a little bit of time moving around, 15 minutes all done. And it drastically reduced their uh, cushion ligament injury um, rates that year in the club. Okay, now, you know, is that coincidence or whatever? You know, maybe. But, um, you know, that's definitely something that can be implemented without it being too taxing on you, okay? So, practice at home. This has to be. Like I said, you know the hours of contact you have with a player during the week? To the amount of hours you don't know what they're doing. So, you can't exclude that. <coughs> um, right, re repeated practice of a movement will create improvements or adaptions. Okay? As long as they're shown the proper technique, and they're not reinforcing bad mechanics, but if they're shown the proper technique, and they go through those exercises, that will make them better at that exercise. Um, Modern lifestyles, you know, children or teenagers um, are in school all day, they're sitting down. They come home, they're doing homework, they're sitting down, they're relaxed, they're at the computer, they're watching telly, they're sitting down. A lot of it is quite stationary. So you need to change those habits. Now in order for that to happen, the next, the next point is important. 
Um, what, what I tried to create was something that you can do without any equipment. Because you know there's an attitude, oh, I, have, I, I can't do that because I need to go to the gym, or you know, so you have to get there, you have to get a lift, the next thing they're not doing it. When really, that doesn't need to be the case at all. You don't need equipment for this program, other than maybe a cushion or a ball, which there would be at home. You don't even need that roll of the towel. That's, that's pretty much literally it. So if there's, think of, of a program that someone can do without any equipment, uh, and they can do it in five minutes, it's far more likely that they're going to adhere to that program. Okay, so that's what, that's what the program needs, needs to be like. You can't be giving them overcomplicated stuff or stuff that you need, you need to, to buy this for or, or whatever. It has to be those basics. So, <coughs> the exercise categories. What, what, what exercises help to keep someone injury free? And if you get it down into categories, say you've got mobility and flexibility. Okay? Um, similar categories, but those type of things would be, for example, their foam rolling, um, stretching, and different sort of movements where you're trying to increase your range of motion, crawling exercises. Now, landing and cutting techniques, um, that's, that's especially relevant for, um, for knee and, and ankle injuries, and a lot of the rehab for, for knee and ankle, like a long time ago, the cruciate Rehab would be very strength based, or now it's more neuromuscular control based. That sounds more complicated than it is. It's basically movements where you have to take your body through a certain movement and control your body parts. Um, during the week there, I did some testing with the, the minor hurdlers for this year uh, on, on basically a couple of jump and landing um, tests. So for that, we marked, say, the, the ASAS here over their pelvis, their knee, and, and their ankles. Put a mark in both, set up a video camera in front and behind, and get them to basically jump off a box. Now that sounds very simple, but you can get a huge amount of information from that. So these are the, the, the more talent, most talented in their age group in Dublin at the moment, and looking at it so far, you can see an awful lot of them have not been taught how to land even. So when they're landing, you will hear this sometimes on treadmills or if you watch, if you've got 20 people and just got them to jump off the box, you know, sometimes you'll hear a real kind of heavy thud where people, they don't bend at the hips or the knees. So there, your ligaments are taking a lot more stress than they need to, your ligaments and joints. Or people are landing, and I'll show you in a book in a minute, people are landing and their knees are buckling in the way. Okay, all big predictors. For, for cruciate uh, and ankle injuries. Um, so, that's solved with a class. That's solved with a little bit of education, a little bit of coaching to the coaches and the players. Demonstrate it, get them to do it, show them the right way, show them the wrong way, get them to land softly, a couple of little cues, and, and, and once they're shown then, and like I said, the research would show that the earlier you get this done, the players are more compliant and it leads to more here and later on in life. They buy into it and then they have those skills. Um, so strength and muscle activation, uh, especially hamstrings, because hamstrings are, are, are the main injury in GA. And eccentric is just basically where the muscle is working and it's lengthened. So a lot of the time, you know, when you're running or sprinting, you, 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 you tear your hamstring in this position here where your hamstring is trying to slow down your leg from going like that, or if you land here and you're trying to bend down on a ball or you hit from the, back, from the back, this leg here has to be able to, your hamstring here has, has to be strong enough in this lengthened position, okay? So you've seen some of the exercises, it just mimics, it just, so for example, a simple exercise, stand on the leg, your leg like this, and just bend it down like that, and back, forces my left leg here to be able to control me when I'm in those positions. Okay, so that's more the neuromuscular control and, and, and proprioception stuff. And neuromuscular control, proprioception is basically a balance exercise, and in order to stop boredom and increase, it, increase the um, adherence and challenging levels to it, you, you can bring in your skills. So you can have players on one leg, throwing the ball over and back, trying to knock each other off, you know, but obviously start off with just being able to maintain their balance. 
So there are hundreds of exercises for all of these categories. Um, so obviously we're not going to go through, you, you know, but, but these are, are pretty much the categories. Mobility, flexibility, landing techniques, strength, and then proprioception and neuromuscular control. They're the groups that need to be uh, taken care of. As opposed to just, I want to stay injury-free, I need to be stronger and make better. You need to be able to move. Your joints need to be able to control yourself in, in those ranges. So, um, to summarize it then, the key elements of implementing an injury prevention program <coughs> in your club, there has to be coach education. Uh, there has to be, they have to have resources as well. There, have to, there has to be player education as a foundation for it. Programs are performed throughout the year, pre-season and throughout. It, it has to be incorporated as routine into the session so that players associate it with performance. And like we said at the start, injury prevention improves performance. Young players are more receptive, there's more adherence if you get them started younger in life. The exercises have to be focused, quick, uh, easy to do, and they have to understand why they're doing it. That comes into the education part. They have to be reviewed every few weeks because they get bored doing the exact same thing all the time. So they have to be changed and they have to be made fun, if possible. Now, um, I'm not sure if there's a booklet for everyone, but just try and pass those booklets around so that there's at least a couple at, at your table, okay? Pass them.
the good technique and the bad technique and be able to give another player feedback. So, the first week of this, there's a lot of feedback. In your training session, you're keeping an eye on them, move from group to group, get them to do it. Um, at home, encourage them, they're doing it in front of the mirror. As the weeks go on, the feedback you know, reduces a little bit and you try and get them to be more independent um, and able to feel if it's right or wrong. And that happens as the program goes along. So there, for example, is six, I think it's, yeah, six simple exercises. Uh, jumping and landing, the bridge, stationary half lunge, waiter's bow, the extender, and the groin squeeze. And all of those, all of those are addressing, all of those are addressing the common injuries in GA: hamstring, groin, knee, ankle, lower limb injuries, which is 76% of the injuries. Um, week two, then, there'll be six different exercises, made a little bit more difficult. Week three, a little bit more difficult again, and so on. And um, then, then players do it a little bit at home. It takes five minutes and there's no equipment, and you do it for a few minutes at the start of the session. And if you try and get that involved with either your team or your club, then obviously less injuries, players are available for games, less money spent on, on, on treatments and, and, and physios. And um, so, if anyone is interested in more information on that, my details are on the back of that. Okay? Now, uh, that's pretty much it from me. I think I've about three minutes left. If anyone has any questions on anything related to this, or just a question that was in your own head, or whatever, let's see if we can help out at all. Um, if there is no questions, we'll leave it at that. Sorry, Tom, can I just ask the question there? The landing technique there. See the second diagram down there. Um, it's just for um, you know the, the landing on heels. If there, you know, athletes that are going to launch up, might be landing, might be coaching the land on the toes. Is that a so? Is there conflict there? Well, well, I suppose. I just want to yeah, well, well, know in terms of training, if, is there a well, what I'm doing this for is GA, really. Right. So, so the landing technique for a long jump is completely different and more technical than how we land after we jump for a ball. So, so this is very specific to GA. Like long jump is a different sport completely. So there definitely would be different technique with that. Yeah, absolutely. But no, for example, so the context that I point of view, it, it, would, would it, 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 you know, if you, if you have somebody landing on the toes, is it a even yeah, so if you look at that second picture there, right? Yeah. See where he's kind of landing on his toes. And yeah. just look at his knees. So see his knees are gone far beyond his toes there. Yeah. So as he's doing that, what's taking all the load? His knees, instead of big glute muscles and hamstring muscles, which are supposed to take it. So then that's knee injury, you know, down the road. So that's that's just an example for that one yeah. there. Yeah. I suppose we've been doing an awful lot of stuff wrong. Um, so if we were to implement this now, the guys that are minors now, is there um, is there makeup we can do? Is for the damage that the, is, the damage that they have done already. Yeah. Is there is, is there exercise that we can do to Yeah, a, a, third, a, a thirty year old can can improve like hundred percent. It's just that you're constantly doing certain things all the time reinforces it change that a little bit, you know, change habits, absolutely, like your, your tissues adapt, 100% they adapt, so, you know, if you're sitting at a desk all day, and, and you're like this, you know, and, and your shoulders are rounded, and you're at a laptop, when you get up that evening, it's not that you go back like this, it'll stay a little bit like this, because you do that all day, so you just need to change that habit, it's the same way with, with the player, who's going to do the same things, he's running over and back the pitch and that's his warm-up or, or whatever. Uh, and tissues adapt. And with, with that and then the technique, you can 100 percent yeah, even even like all the seniors can change. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do, but it, it's, 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 it's all involved in the program. So yeah, all the exercises, 
will be, that's only the first week of it, so yeah. it'll be all in the booklet and all on the website, in, including then with the coach education and player education at the start of it. Yeah. Okay, Tommy. Um, Guys, we're really we're really tight for time here today. So you know, Tommy Tommy has a handout there with um, details on his website, his email address, his mobile number. Any any questions, any further inquiries you may have about all that sort of stuff, um, you may be directed towards that. Um,